All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sebastian Strop. I'm a system engineer here at Script Logic, and I'll be conducting today's presentation. Uh, we'll be taking a look at Active Administrator, and as you can see on the screen right now, I have Active Administrator open, that's the admin console, and I have uh, four modules which are important here. We have our security and delegation, our group policy, auditing, and recovery. And we'll be going through these modules one by one. On our start page, we already have some options here. We can see the last audit events which happen in our environment, and we also have some ability here to uh, do an Active Directory replication analysis. So if our replication fails in our Active Directory, we can also report on that, and you'll get an email immediately. With Active Administrator, we do make use of uh, auditing client installed on every machine that you're trying to do real-time auditing and we leverage your SQL database on the back end. First off, let's take a look at our security and delegation module. This is a security and delegation module view. It gives me a comprehensive and aggregated view of my Active Directory permissions in my domain. For example, I can see with a single glance where inheritance is broken, and also when I select any object in my Active Directory, I can see the permissions assigned to it. Here in this case, I have my permissions color-coded, so you can see my uh, default permissions are in black, my inherited permissions are in gray, my explicit permissions are in blue, and my active templates are in green. So what are active templates? Active templates are groupings of explicit permissions assigned to a certain role. And out of the box, Active Administrator comes with 45 best practice roles, but I can certainly create new active templates with explicit permissions of my choosing. Let's take a look at these active templates. So, for example, the permissions required to be an exchange administrator are quite different than the permissions required to be a mail storage administrator. What you have to do is you have to go through the delegation wizard and apply these changes to all of the users that you're trying to delegate permissions to. It's very time-consuming and inefficient because once I hire a new uh, help desk user, as an example, or another administrator, I have to go through that process again. And all too often are more rights assigned than truly necessary. Active Templates allows me to standardize my permission sets and make them consistent throughout my environment. So here in my case now I have Ted and Ted is a help desk user. He's been assigned certain permissions based on these help desk uh, permissions assigned through the Active Templates. I can also see my green LED up here, which shows me that active templates are being used in that particular OU. Now, what happens if somebody goes in with a native tool like Active Directory Users and Computers and deletes these permission sets? Not to worry, because Active Administrator does have self-healing templates. So if uh, uh, Active Administrator notices that uh, the permissions have been removed or changed, then Active Administrator will self-heal and reapply these permissions. I also have the ability to report on my delegated permissions. So in my case here, just simply right-click, report on my delegated permissions. This will show me my native delegated permissions. And I also have the ability to report on my Active Template delegated permissions. Let's do that now. Let's select this. What we're going to see is a report which will show us exactly what permissions are applied in that particular location in our Active Directory. If I want to, then I can export these in one of these popular formats, PDF, uh, HTML, Excel, and I can also email straight out of here as well. I also have the ability to search for permissions in my Active Directory. So if I want to find out where somebody has access in my Active Directory, instead of having to do this manually and visit each and every location, I just simply select here that I'm searching for permissions. I can select an account. In our case here, we'll choose Pierre and find out where Pierre has access in our Active Directory. Now if I'm saying, well, uh, maybe I'm more interested in what type of access he has, I also can do that as well. I can choose access type, generic rights, property access, object classes, and extended rights. So I don't necessarily have to search for user. I can also search for the permissions themselves and create reports based on that. All right, let's move on to our group policy module. 
Well, anybody who has dealt with group policies before probably doesn't like the native tools which are provided to deal with group policies. So I think you're really going to enjoy this portion. Here in this particular view, we can see all of the group policies which we have in place in our Active Directory environment currently. I can also change this view, and I can view the group policies currently in place for my OUs. If I want to, I can also compare group policies to each other. So in my case, I can simply select my Washington group policy object and compare this to a different group policy in my environment. Let's choose our Houston group policy object. Here now I can see exactly what changes uh, are in place. Uh, it's also color-coded. Anything that has changed is in yellow. Anything that's been added is in green. Anything that has been removed is in red. I think you'll agree this is much easier than exporting this into XML and uh, going through it line by line. Then I also have a group policy history. It means I can actually take a look at what group policies I used to have in place for my different OUs. So in this case, I can now see that I have four different previous versions of my Washington group policy object. And if somebody comes into my office and says, well, something has changed, what changes did you make? I can actually also create a report on this. So I can show changes from one version of my group policy to another. So in this case, I can see exactly what has been changed because it's color-coded. Now, if I want to roll back to these changes, it's also very easy. I just simply select the group policy, the previous version of the group policy that I'm trying to roll back to, and select Rollback. I also have the convenience of an offline GPO repository. I can create offline copies of my GPOs where I can check in and check out my GPOs make changes to it, stop, and resume later. And I can also assign editing permissions to these offline GPOs to a junior admin, which then alleviates the risk of having a junior admin making changes to live GPOs. It's very simple. I just simply right-click on my GPO that I'm trying to check out. I'll check out my GPO, which will then show that I'm the person who has this checked out. I can make edits right here from the product. And once I'm done, I can decide to apply these changes or discard these changes. Anybody logging into another version or another instance of my Active Administrator console can immediately see that I'm currently working on this offline version of that GPO. Once I make the changes and I apply them, then I can, uh, as an example, tell my junior admin that I want him to make changes. If he has made the changes, he comes back to me, explains to me that he's made the changes, then I can compare my offline GPO to the live GPO. Here in this case, it comes back that the GPOs are identical. So, of course, I would tell him, please make the changes that I ask you to do, which then, let's try this, compare our offline GPO to the live GPO. We can see those are exactly the changes which have occurred. Once I'm happy with these changes, I can then go ahead and publish these changes to my live Active Directory. But keep in mind, nothing is forever, so I can always go back to my GPO history and revert these changes and roll them back. I also have the convenience of a GPO modeling. So if I want to run a what-if scenario, what happens if we move one user to a different OU? Or what happens if we move a different computer to a different OU? Well, let's try this. So we'll uh, select one of our users here. And we'll move Lyndon Johnson into a different OU. Currently, he resides in our Houston OU. So let's go ahead and give him an upgrade. We'll move him to our Washington GPO. Now, I also have the ability to show my modeling deltas. And if I wanted to, I could even run a what-if what if scenario. So I could run my scenario against my offline GPO repository. So any GPO that's not even in my live environment, I could then test out. So in this case, let's calculate the GPO changes. And we can see, all right, he's going to gain the Washington GPO, and he's going to lose the Houston GPO. Well, it doesn't really tell me much yet because I do want to know the details. Then I can also run a specific report here on all affected registry keys. All right, uh, we also have the ability to enable client-side troubleshooting if your GPOs aren't applied or if you have trouble with them, then this will also help you troubleshoot them further. 
All right, so let's move on to our auditing module. Who likes sifting through event logs? Pretty much nobody, but with Active Administrator, reviewing your audit logs does truly become a breeze. As you can see off the bat, we can see a report of all of the events in the last 24 hours, and that's a data stream, and it's not filtered or anything, so we'll see anything that happened in our environment. I also have some reports over here, and I can create more reports if I want to, and then filter down the information a little bit more. So if I wanted to know all of my password resets in the last uh, three hours, that's absolutely doable. Any uh, users created, uh, group policy changes made, changes in general in Active Directory, no problem at all. I can just simply select them. Also here in my data stream, I can see not only what happened, but I also have a before and after value. So in, here case, in this case, the manager has changed. So if I want to have some more information about this, just simply double click on that and I can see the details on this. Also, perhaps uh, other things are interesting for you. Maybe you want to see account user modifications. Well, then I can just simply select this and filter down further to that. We can also have uh, more options here in our filters. So I can choose uh, to include or exclude certain users. Maybe I'm interested in specific events in Active Directory. There's the uh, extended list. I can also choose to filter down uh, to my domain controllers or event description. Or if I do know the event log ID that Microsoft designated to this, then I can also filter down to the event log ID. Affected objects locations, the object types, failure and success as well. Now, not only can I create these reports here, I can also view these reports and export them, and then export them in one of these popular formats, or email this out of here with the top header where I can see all of my filter settings. What's also important is that I can create alerts on this as well. So if I want to find out if perhaps uh, the password never expires setting has been set when a user was created, that's important for me, I can create an alert on that. If I want to find out when somebody is uh, trying to uh, delete organizational units in my environment, I can report on that as well. I can also set schedules for my reports. So perhaps every Monday morning I want to find out all of the users which have been created in my environment. This is how you would do it. Just simply set the schedule. I then decide who should be notified, who should get a version of this report. I choose the report format, or maybe I don't want to get an email. Maybe I want to just simply drop this into a file share for posterity. This is how you would do it. All right, last but not least, let's move on to our recovery module. So you know exactly how it is. Sometimes you have uh, overzealous uh, junior admins who want to help, who want to clean up. This is where you can resolve issues with that. This is our recovery module. Let's go back to our security delegation. Let's delete an OU. So we have a junior admin who is currently uh, committing a severely career-limiting move by deleting this OU, and it's gone. Now, what you normally would do is you would uh, have to power down your environment, chase down the Active Directory recovery uh, a password for it to uh, start an authoritative restore, but there is no need to chase down the restore password, who has it, is it an envelope, who has the envelope, and I simply schedule backups on a regular basis, and then I have the ability to also kick off backups manually if I know I'm going to make extensive changes in my environment, and I want to have the option to back out of these changes. So this is the recovery module. These backups are just simple flat files, which are stored in this uh, location. So if I wanted to, I could even create backups of the backups. Now let's try to restore something on the fly. We just simply browse through our backup. As you might have caught here, we can also restore DNS zones. So here we still have our used and OU and all of the user objects in it. So let's choose these. We want to bring them back. Here we have the option now to restore all attributes on these objects, and because we're also dealing with user objects, we can also choose what to do with the passwords. In this case, we have the ability to either bring back the passwords or reset the passwords and assign new password to these users. Well, I don't even want them to find out that anything was done wrong, so let's recover the passwords from the tombstone. 
So if I like what I see now, I just simply hit restore. This is also an additional audit trail where I can define, well, why are you trying to bring back these objects? So in this case, I choose that's a deleted AD object, accidental delete, hit OK. And now it will bring back all of these objects, including all of the attributes of these objects as well. So if I move back to my security and delegation, I'll just simply refresh this now. What you're going to see is that my use no you will be back. All of my users are back and my junior admin still has a promising career in the IT field. So thank you very much for taking the time to take a look at our product Active Administrator. If you're interested, you can go to our website www.scriptlogic.com and also get an eval version of Active Administrator and see how it performs in your environment and how helpful it can be. Thank you very much for taking the time and have a great day.